Um, Honorable Minister uh, John Eno, I don't know what's happening on um, at your end. I hope uh, it's not about uh, uh, calls coming in. If you can have that, that will make uh, uh, this crossing um, smoother than it is at the moment. Okay, let me ask you this. Um, sports as an industry is untapped. You just mentioned uh, the sport industry policy document which you have been going through. Sports as an industry in Nigeria is untapped. What will you be doing to change this narrative? Well, quite a number of things. I mean that, you know, we are at a point in which we can't continue to look at sports as mainly recreational. And I think that, that is one of the main reasons for this, you know, this document. There are quite a number of initiatives that are going to be pursued. I mean, the fact that we're going to require quite some, you know, investments, you know, in this sector. And, you know, government can't do it alone. I think that we're going to come up with quite a number of initiatives to encourage the private sector to do those investments. If, for example, you know, the private sector is, you know, incentivized in terms of, look, the investments that you make, you're going to get some tax rebates and things like to be quite encouraging. And I think it's going to revolutionize this sector a great deal. Okay, Honorable Minister of Sport, uh, football in Nigeria is opium and the previous administration developed a 10-year football master plan. I don't know if you've seen that already. And uh, they also uh, made moves to metamorphose sports from being mere recreation to business. Would you like to sustain some of these initiatives? I mean, I, I think that is the way to go. I mean, we have two classifications. We have grassroots, you know, you know football. We have, um, you know, the elite football or grassroots sports and the elite, you know, elite sports and things like that. You know, so, I mean, whereas in terms of the elites, you're looking at, you know, what eventually gives us the medals that we want to win as a country. You know, but to sustain that, there must be some mass interest, you know, at the grassroots level. And I think that at the different levels, whether in terms of inter-school inter sports, inter in terms of, I mean, all those, you know, you know they call it headmaster's cup, principal's cup, all those kinds of things, the national youth, you know, festivals, the national festival, you know, of sports. I mean, all of those initiatives and the initiatives that we need. And I think that because as the elite sports group exists, it's important to have a feeder that fits the different sporting activities. You know, and I think that, you know, they, you know, we are, the sports development ministry is a ministry that excites the greatest interest and attention of Nigerians. And I think that we're going to sustain, you know, the initiatives that have to do with having to grow sports, you know, from the grassroots level, I mean, you can't grow sports without having to have the required infrastructure at that level, you know, to expose a lot of the teaming youths, a lot of the out-of-school children, a lot of, I mean, you need to get people to have an alternative. You know, you know, when people know, for example, that if they develop a particular sport, they can climb to the zenith of their career, it's going to encourage people a lot. And I think that this ministry is going to be available, you know, for that. All right. Well, the annual budget for sports from the government is a minor fraction of what is budgeted for other sectors. And this is one of the reasons uh, the ministry usually um, gets stranded when its intervention is required uh, by some sports federations or other needs. Does this bother you yet? And if yes, have you thought um, a way to go around this bend? Well, it does bother me. I mean, it's uh, my spent you know, about 16 years in the National Assembly. And most of these years I was involved in finance and in appropriations. I sat as chairman of the budget appropriations committee at some point for four years in the House of Reps. So I'm familiar with the challenge of, you know, you know appropriation for the sports, you know, the sports ministry. You know, but I think that our president, you know, President Siwajibola Metinubu has taken the right step. I mean, he has recognized the importance of sports and has created a separate ministry of its own, the Ministry of Sports Development. This in itself is the beginning, I believe, of the salvation for this industry. That in recognition of the critical role that sports you know, development plays in our country, that this president you know, is not just going to stop at creating a separate ministry for sports development, he's going to back it up with the necessary funding that government needs to provide. But having said so, the enormity of the challenge and of the things that need to be done and not so that government alone will be able to overcome all. And that's where we're talking about the private sector. And that's where the, the national sports industry policy 
uh, you know, it's, you know, incidentally, it will be for me to implement. And I think that the next couple of days and weeks, we'll be able to set up an implementation committee to look at those aspects and look at what to pursue. And I think that as we sell this policy to Nigerians, as we sell this policy to the private sector, as we come up with initiatives to encourage the private businessman and private sector to buy into it, I think that a lot of the funding challenge and problems will be overcome. All right. Uh, corruption in, in, in sports is a global pandemic. Um, Nigeria is not left out. Um, are you looking at that direction as Minister of Sport to curb corruption in Nigerian sports? Well, I tell you this. I mean, the, the first engagement that I had on the day that I took over as Minister you know, of Sports Development, um, one of the things that I said was that, you know, that, that was in response to some of the reactions, you know, from the sporting community about my appointment as Minister of Sports Development. And I said, not, I, I, did, I didn't have to necessarily be, you know, you know, an active participant in the sports sector, you know, to provide the kind of leadership that is required on, to be Minister of Sports Development. What it requires is what is leadership. What it requires is uh, someone that has passion and commitment, someone that is serious-minded, someone who is transparent and accountable, and I think that if these are the qualities that this ministry needs, I got these qualities in abundance, and I think that I'm going to uphold them. I mean, I promise one thing, I'm going to be transparent. And I think that as much as I'm transparent, you know, most of our people are willing to follow. What our people have continued to lack is the right leadership. So if they find me as the Minister of Sports Development being transparent, not involved in any of those things that we call as corruption, I think that that would be good leadership enough to begin to tackle the problem of corruption in the sports sector.